Two teams have had fairly poor years, but now they've got a massive prize to fight for. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. Rugby World Cup 2023. This is quarterfinal number one. It's Wales versus Argentina. It's in the Stade de Marseille in Marseille. It's on Saturday, 14th of October. Kickoff is 4 p.m. BST. This is world number seven versus world number eight. Wales, the winners of Pool C. Argentina, runners up from Pool D. We're going to have a look at the team, starting with the Welsh side. So front row is Thomas, Elias and Francis. They seem to you know, established themselves as first choice. A lot of kind of toing and froing in the Welsh team through the through the pool stages and all year as Gatlin was looking for that team that would bring them success. He's you know got them four from four in the pool and it looks like he's he's settled on a team now as well. The second row then we got Rollins and Beard forming that combination there. Again, that was another area where there was a lot of kind of changing to see what combination was going to work. It looks like these guys are the ones that Gatlin feels like can do it for him. In the back row then, we've obviously got no uh, Tulupe Falatau broke his arm um, last time out. So really sad for him because he's a real class operator and it seemed like you know he was coming back to some top form as well for Wales and he, he's going to be a big miss, I think, for this quarterfinal but still you know they've got quality in that back row we've got captain jack morgan who has been fantastic for them tommy raffle there is at seven and aaron wainwright at eight so you know a really decent back row there and they're gonna have to stand up and be counted i think in this one halfbacks then you got Garrett Davis at nine, Dan Bigger, he was a bit of an injury worry, but he is back now and, you know, he could be crucial for them as well in terms of just guiding them to victory in this one. Got Josh, Josh Adams there on the left wing. You know, uh, he knows his way to the try line. The centres, Nick Tompkins and George North are now, you know, as, as far as this Welsh team, at least an established combination in their centres, and they're going very well. Lewis Rees-Samet, the gas man on the right wing, but he's been showing that he's more than gas as well in this Rugby World Cup. It's been great to see him, you know, uh, get involved in more than just runaway thro- tries for his team. Liam Williams, just you know, a classy, classy operator there at fullback. You know, he, he's going to be contesting balls in the air and he's going to be diffusing bombs as well. So um, he he's going to be a great part of this team. We, If you looked at, we looked at some stats before this as well. Wales kick a lot more than Argentina do. Argentina prefer to hold on to the ball. So, you know, the likes of Williams, Rhys Samet, Adams, uh, and then Bigger, uh, Bigger and Davies kicking. They're going to get up there and they're going, to, they're going to try and disrupt that Argentina back line by getting up there in their faces, trying to beat them to the ball or at least make them make mistakes from high bombs that are going to be coming at them, um, you know, all, all afternoon slash evening. Then on the bench, you get Dewey Lake there who, you know, looked like he was going to be maybe the starting hooker and, you know, he's, he's fairly close to it. So it means when he comes on, he, he's, he's going to add as well. You've got Damachescu there, who I think has done really well for a guy who's so few caps to, you know, force his way to the point where he is now uh, the backup loose head. you got uh, Lewis there backing up tight head as well. You've got David Jenkins covering the second row. You've got uh, Chris Junza covering the back row as well. So, He's a guy that, you know, he's been in and out of this Wales um, squad because he's fallen in and out of favour with Gatland. So he's going to have to have a big game, I think, off the bench in this one. You've got Tomas Williams there at nine. Probably feels a little bit aggrieved not to be a starter because it looked like coming into to the Rugby World Cup like he was going to be the preferred starter. Similar to Sam Costello there as well in the 22 jersey. He's... You know, and and players like that, when they're in that situation, sometimes when they come on, they can be the ones to actually lift their team if the if the team's playing badly and guide them to that victory, and maybe they get their chance then to play. You know, start in the semi final. Got Rio Dyer in twenty three. He's had a fantastic season. You know, we talked about his form kind of dipped a little bit, but 
you know he's still a very dangerous runner and he's another player who's going to add off the bench as well let's now have a look at the argentina team so front row we got gallo montoya and gomez cordella so you know the montoya there and um you got creevy on the bench like whoever of those is starting you know you you know you're getting quality and you also know that you are getting lots of experience with them the props you know the chopped and changed are props trying to look for a combination that works it looks like gallo and gomez codella could be the answer for them but we'll have to see how they perform in this quarter final the second row then we've got uh Pagas Dizabal and Lavanini there. Tom Slavanini, what you got to worry about him is that he doesn't get a yellow or red card. Um, you know, if he doesn't do that, he's going to con contribute very well to the team, I think. Back row then, you got uh, Juan Martin Gonzalez, Kramer, and Isa. So, Facundo Isa has been excellent, I think, for them. Um, and the same with, with Kramer as well. It's actually a very decent back row. And the battle between them is going to be something to enjoy, I think. The halfbacks then for Argentina, I'm not sure whether they, they know you know which is their best combination there because it seems to change all the time but for this one at least we've got Kubei and Carrera Santiago Carreras that is a 10 and Matteo Carreras um on the left wing there we've got Santiago Chocobares and Lucio Sinti in the center so we saw them as a combination earlier on in the in the um in the pool stages and here they are back again now for a quarter final both decent players but they're going to have you know to really perform in that midfield to you know keep the Tompkins and north quiet because north i think has been excellent at 13 for wales You've got buffelli there on the right wing he can be hot and cold you know and he can he can land monster penalties as well so his performance could be a barometer for how the team themselves are going to go got one cruz malia there a fullback as well um dangerous runner with ball in hand and you know he's not going to want to um lose that aerial battle either he's going to get up there and try and compete on the bench as i said you got augustin creevy there coming on at hooker he's he's just going to help them i think when he comes on he's not going to they're not going to be a bit diff there you got sclavi and Berio there too who've had starts in this rugby world cup so you know kind of similar to wales i think where the you know you got some some players on the bench there who have been kind of in and out of the starting team and will look to kind of push the case when they come on i think you got alamano as well who's been starting in the second row too so he's another guy who's going to want to prove a point you got rodrigo bruni there covering the the back row baza and velez another guy he was looked like he was starting nine um until the last few games sanchez looked like he was maybe going to be the starting 10 as well so lots of players on that bench who are coming on to prove a point moroni too there covering the rest of the back line so you know two really good um on paper at least teams there you got wales who you know they went through pool c you know and they won all of the games they did struggle in um some of them especially against uh portugal who gave them a real game but you know argentina they started really badly against england where basically they had the entire game against 14 players and they just got absolutely you know destroyed not in terms of like tons of, of tries against them but just beaten up basically by that england pack and they couldn't impose themselves even with a man advantage and you know from there then they had to recover uh, they did really well i think in that game against japan because japan kept coming back at them but they're able to go again in this game you know i think for them they're going to have to do something similar this is going to be a back and forth contest wales when they're in the kind of form they're in now they're not a kind of team that will just be beaten just because you know you've got a bit of a lead on them they're they're the type of team that can score in bursts and get you know two or three tries to get themselves back into contest so i feel like this one is going to go back and forth back and forth through the game but you know all through um from the start of the six nations 
this year I've been saying I've got a feeling about Wales that they're going to make it to a semi-final and this is their chance to prove me right but I'll say another thing that in my Super Brew Wales and Fiji are the two teams that anytime that I backed them that have backed them to win um you know um they they've let me down and anytime that I've, I've backed against them they've also let me down although in fairness with Wales they won all of the games so I probably should have backed them to win a little bit more than I did but still you know with this one I think it's going to be tight but I think Wales are going to take the victory